Hello there. Today, we are going to be putting a slip yoke eliminator and a brand new drive shaft rear end into this Jeep Cherokee. And we're going to be doing it without removing the transfer case from the vehicle. So, let's get cracking. Now step one for doing it inside of the vehicle is we are going to want to take, this is a 30 millimeter 12 spline, to take the uh, drain plug off. Now I don't know why, but some vehicles have a 10 millimeter input socket instead of this drain plug. Don't ask me why Jeep can't make anything just standardized. I don't work there. And as you can see below, I have my oil catch can for catching the can of oil. Now while that's draining, I'm gonna put my jack under the transmission. We're gonna take some weight off of this transfer plate Now, if you have a stock drive line, as in if you haven't really done anything, you will not have a drop bracket unless your previous owner did it. You will not have a drop bracket like this. I don't remember what company this was, but it was pretty good quality and I'll put it down in the description. Why would I be getting rid of it instead of just keeping it and doing the drive shaft upgrade? There's two reasons. The drive shaft upgrade is meant for stock configuration of a Cherokee or Jeep where it doesn't have this inch drop. The second reason is this inch drop ruins, not ruins, it hurts your ground clearance. So when you're going up and over stuff, this inch drop means everything's at least an inch lower. Third, there's a bit of an aesthetic reason. Uh, it brings everything, tucks it up a lot nicer, and I think the exhaust hanging down isn't a great look. A lot of Cherokees have it. Not a good look in my opinion. This is a very new transmission mount. I installed this just a few months ago, about a thousand miles and it already broke off one of these nubs and I torqued it down to spec. And so I am going to rescind my some guy approval rating for this and I will update the video. I'll put the video right up in that link of how I installed this. It's a very easy process and it actually really helped uh, alleviate the drive shaft vibrations I'm getting from this older drive shaft, which replacing this drive shaft as we are right now will really help with that. And so that was a big a uh, fix for my death wobble issues and I'm going to be trying to find maybe an American version of this as this one is made in China now for a lot of smaller projects I wouldn't recommend this but for something of this magnitude especially it being on your drive shaft or your drive line I recommend separating your nuts and bolts into ziplock bags so you don't lose any and labeling them so you know where they come from and where they go so I have designated four for this, uh, drive shaft bolts, transfer case output case, and the transfer face, and then the transmission plate. So that way it'll be a whole lot easier on yourself when you're putting everything back together. Now only for the front drive shaft, but you do not have to remove the front drive shaft from the front axle. You just have to remove it from the transfer case. So there's four eight millimeter bolts, and I recommend I recommend using a bungee cord just to hold up the drive shaft so you don't have to take it all the way out and it'll push a little bit out of the way and give you that extra clearance for the work you're going to need to do. Now that we have the front drive shaft free of the front drive shaft yoke, we need to remove the rear and that's a little bit easier but you have to remove that rear axles yoke, same 4 8 millimeter or 3 16 size screws. Those four are a little bit easier to access than they are up front here. Simply take those four out and then we'll slide the drive shaft out from the transfer case. And this is what we're replacing. That three and a half inches 
of spline is all that was keeping your drive shaft actually driving your car. Now that we have our drive shafts out and we have the transfer case and four wheel low, we want to start removing the things we need to remove. Now because we're doing this under the vehicle, those things are a lot less than if we we're going to take the whole case out. But one main thing is you want to remove right here with the safety pin is your speedo wire. A lot easier said than done. Nope, oh, man, I said it, and it's done. So this wire right here. Now, in some models, the uh, newer models, 97 and up, there's a push pin mechanism. Now, for mine, the 95 and earlier, it's just this one little, you know, traditional plastic clip. You want to push that to the side. Then you've got your speedo ring that is held in place with a half inch bolt here. You want to take a picture of that so you know exactly what angle it's going to go in when you line it back up because that will determine how it functions with the interior gearing and how fast your car thinks it's going. Now there's three sets of bolts to take out. There's eight on the largest perimeter, there's four on the transfer case face, and there's three on the output shaft cover. Now you're going to have to remove these three, which are three quarter on mine, and then there are four 12 millimeters, and then there are seven three quarters again with one 12 point that fits for a half inch 12 point, but that might be different on yours because everything's different on on every other Jeep. So uh, just start from the furthest back, these three, these four, and then these eight. We'll just take this all apart once you've got your Speedo out. Now that we have the three bolts off this outer case, you can go ahead and try and crack it. There's a couple different places Out. And there's our first pot gone. With our snap ring plier, you're gonna. This is a little challenging, and you might want to have a flathead screwdriver on hand. Well, after probably 20 minutes of struggling, I got this ring off, and that's kind of showing you why some people prefer to take the transfer case out rather than put it, put the work in down on the ground here. The reason this ring was so hard to take out is typically these rings have little holes so the indentation of the plier can go into them. Whatever idiot at Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Fiat, Ram, whatever, who built this decided those holes were too expensive to drill into this before installing. So now let's take the yoke off the front end. Now using a 1 and 1 8 12 point, put my socket on the nut in there, then we're using the drive shaft bolts from the front end, because this is the front end and there's different thread patterns and pitches from the front to the back. This is where the bleep and jeep yoke breaker comes in. You want to find the pattern that lines up. Once you use the breaker bar and the yoke thing to break it loose. Take your ratchet wrench. And get the nut and that yoke off. And the yoke should come with some models. This dust protector doesn't come with the yoke and some it does. If it doesn't come with the yoke, then you're going to want to take a screwdriver and push it off of the back face here so that you can have a clean and clear area to clean up. This one we're going to want to reuse later on so don't throw it away. One of the challenges for figuring out what size all these bolts are is that a lot of them are covered in oil and dirt and sand and even some small pebbles really. So these are 10 millimeter on this second layer here but trying to get the 10 millimeter head over some of them when they're covered in all that gunk can be challenging. So I recommend just take your flathead or wire brush 
try and clean those up. But now that we've got the yoke off the front, the lock ring off of right here, we're gonna move on and take these four 10 millimeter bolts out. Now that I actually have all five bolts off, use a nice size flathead to try and gently pull this off. Try not to scar any metal. You're not totally sure what you're gonna have to reuse. It's always safe. Always good to be safe, but all of this is going to the junk, so oh well. And what you're looking at now is your oil pump for circulating oil around your transfer case. That's what this ring is right here. So be very careful not to mess that up. Now that we have the old output shaft cover out of the vehicle, you can determine whether or not you're gonna have to cut down your shift linkage shifter post thingamajigger. And you'll see that indentation coming off of this output shaft is much taller by, by about a half an inch than on the new cover. And even more than that, on the new cover, it's threaded in about a third of an inch. So you really don't have as much space coming up from here. How you determine whether or not you need to alter this is it should not be coming up more than one inch. And ours is one inch. We do not have to cut it down, hopefully. Uh, according to the internet, we do not have to cut it down. But be careful when installing. That is, that is three quarter inch at four low. Um, and you wanna be doing this in four low, just once again. So if yours is greater than an inch, you wanna take an angle grinder and you want to do two things. You wanna cut it down to about three quarter inch and then you wanna give it a slight bevel so you don't have any harsh uh, lines or cuts in metal. Now that we have the front output covers, both the top and bottom off, we can take the main cover off. And that is, once again, eight bolts. One of them is a 12 point and the rest are six points. You're gonna want to uh, make sure you scrape all of them off and locate all eight of them. I believe there is eight. There was, I thought there was four up there. There was five because one was so covered in dirt. It just felt like it was a flat piece of metal. So be careful, scrape all these off and then let's start cranking. Now the seven six sides on mine are 15 millimeter and the 12 point is a 10 millimeter 12 point. So I'm gonna start with, since there's eight different bolts, I'm going to just break loose each one first before I start cranking all of them off. Now I'm struggling to find what they call pinch points or leverage points. The internet says it is here and here on the black bolts that have the washers but i can't seem to find it actually on the transfer case corresponding with where those bolts went also just fyi using the box that all the stuff came in came in poked holes corresponding to the orientation wrote top that way orientation placement and distance of each of the bolts so i know which one goes back in each hole this is pretty important when it comes to, you know, stuff like drive lines. Not so important when it comes to replacing your headliner. I have identified the position. You need a rather thin piece of metal, whether it's a screwdriver or whatever. You wedge it in right there and twist and pry. And you'll start making your gap and it's gonna start pouring out. I should have seen that coming. I should have seen that coming. Uh, get your oil tray to try and prevent, you know, the least amount of oil leak onto wherever you're doing this. Um, I'm going to go get that oil tray and crack this bad boy open and we'll take it apart and then we start putting it back together. Oh, that's not light. That's not light whatsoever. I would call that halfway. <laughs> There's the inside of your uh, transfer case. You want to be sure that uh, everything's in good shape. 
right here you've got a little magnet that will collect any shavings. You know, just inspect that, make sure you don't have any major shavings. You know, nothing, nothing terrible appears to be in mine, which makes me happy. So I'll slide that back, but I will clean that off before final assembly. Looking good. Now, let's start cleaning this up. So now that we've got the front half of our transfer case up, take it all apart and so it's pretty much six parts so one we have the rear output shaft this is what we need to be changing out right now so we can set down on some cardboard now we've got this which is the rear output shaft which has some just dirt from when we removed it you have your oil pump and you have your oil pump spout so your oil spouts right here looking a little gunky but that's probably just from removal as you can see there's all the previous RTV hanging out there so I'll put that back just for safekeeping you want to make sure you've got an o-ring in there we do so we're just going to put that back in here for now a later point we need to clean all the previous rtv off and out of there but for right now let's concentrate on this and take our snap ring pliers and spend another three years Once you get the snap ring off of the rear output shaft, put this one to the side. I believe we have to reuse it. So lift these off and you may have, oh, and they should separate, there they go. And in some models, there is a needle bearing set inside these bearings and you'll have to use your new shaft to push it out on a press or a bearing puller set not a challenging thing just a heads up and i was under the impression that the 95s and earliers had to and my vehicle is a 95 but for whatever reason it does not have needle bearings so you know good job dodge chrysler ram whatever you are and it just fits right on there and then we place the snap ring right back on here but before I finally seat that on there by putting the snap ring back on, I'm going to take this off and I'm going to put some AT4 so this doesn't sear itself up and overheat on its first startup. Now once you have your snap ring fully seated, just go around and double check. It's entirely beneath where it should be, and mine is, which means we can move on to throwing this whole thing back together. That's the halfway point, boys and ladies. Now that we have our sprocket with the new, the new sprocket with the bearings on it, we can start putting things back together. Now you want to put your oil filter back in. Now remember, there has to be an o-ring either in there or on the tip of this. Now you can either try and fit this all back together in one go. When we install it back in the vehicle, you have to install the pickup line and the pickup before you put this back on the vehicle. But you don't necessarily have to try and do that with it connected to the oil pump. It can hurt, it can't hurt. I don't know. We'll see when I do it. And then you can determine if you want to try it. But let's pick up our bearing. Can you determine if it's stretching, bending, warped at all? That's up to you. Mine looks to be in pretty good shape as far as I can tell. That side's your input shaft. That put is your output shaft. That's your output shaft. We're going to try and lift it back into the vehicle. Uh, wish me luck. Remember to try and remember everything.
Now, if your band can stretch and touch this bottom, it is too worn out. Mine cannot. It probably should be replaced someday, but today is not that day. Now, we've got our surface cleaned up. Time to RTV and put that first base on and then the eight bolts. Now that we have our Permatex for making our gasket, you're going to want to take a good bead of gasket all the way around. Going. Now you're going to want to smear it around all. Now there's only one way you could really put this on. So it'd be hard to mess up, but I'll still jinx myself. You want to hit the sprocket in the center and shimmy it on there. Or you can take your box of bolts and start replacing them in a crisscross fashion. Now remember when you're reinstalling the top uppermost bolt, the one that has the nut on the back, that it has it has a bracket that holds on your speedometer wire that you have to put on before you put that backing nut on. Now to put your oil pump, you have to make sure you have attached it to the interior oil line. You want to make sure you've actually installed the interior oil line as well. Can be helpful. Did I do something wrong here? Oh, there you go. And there's a bit of play that you can take to your advantage. that did not install. I'm going to officially recommend that when you're installing this outer case, case you're going to want to try and install the line into the fuel pump or into the oil pump. Um, but if you've done what I've done and you've already got it cranked down and the sealant sealing, how we're going to fix this is there's a bit of play that you have right here. So I'm going to go get the smaller screwdriver and we're going to use it like a little piece of leverage and make it happen. You're gonna to wanna to take two of the provided snap lock rings and snap lock them. So, gotta be honest, getting that first snap ring to go onto the shaft took uh, probably about an hour and a half biggest waste of my time in my life if if rough trail had used snap rings with holes in the ends rather than these I presume just a couple pennies cheaper rings it would have saved what will probably be three hours if that first one took an hour and a half and the second one's gonna take another hour and a half so to put your speedo ring on put snap ring on speedo ring then snap ring and then we're gonna put the gasket on, fill this back up. I hate snap rings. Well, that second snap ring on, that second snap ring went on in like 35 seconds because why wouldn't it? And I don't want you to think I only tried the one ring. I switched both rings out trying getting that first one on because you have to get it on here past this first notch out of that first notch back to the second notch that took so long i don't know why second one went on real easy so now we have our snap rings our speedo gear in place let's get this baby back together
Now, just like the sealant before, you want to pre-lube your bearings and you want to make sure you have properly mixed. So I've got four of the five of these last bolts back in. And once I get this fifth one started up, we'll torque these all down to 20 square foot pound, 20 feet, square feet pound. You know what I'm saying. Use your torque stick, go to 20. And that's what you want it at. You want the gasket to be spread out nice and good. And you want to go in a star pattern to get an even application, an even spread of force as you're pushing it down. Here we have the new yoke for the rear end, the rear output shaft, and it comes with a crush sleeve um, seal and a gold bolt. So what you're going to want to do is put some RTV inside your bolt or inside your nut because we're going to want that to not be a place for leaking. You're going to want to put it inside the yoke and then you want to install it. You want to do the same thing on the front except uh, you want to use the new crush sleeve that they give you but you want to use your old yoke. Let's install it and then we can get down to torquing everything back. Everywhere that mates up metal to metal that rotates such as the outer part of your yoke you do want to put just a little bit of ATF on. So get that in there. So we've got our Icon torque stick set to 150. Hopefully we're not going to break any of these nice chrome parts I'm using. And 150 is because there's a whole lot of pressure that goes on to this part given that it's in the middle of your drive shaft and second you're crushing that plastic sleeve or that rubber seal down hence crush hence why hell the hence why it's called a crush sleeve oh that's a glorious sound 150 pounds baby Whew. now repeat the same process on your front shaft and then let the RTV seal for a minimum of one hour before filling it with fluids. I would recommend um, more than that. I'm going to let it sit overnight, especially if it's not at an ambient temperature of 70 degrees. Now for reinstalling the speedo gear, remember the picture you took of the orientation of your speedometer affects how you're going to be able to read the speed. Two, the gearing on the end of your speedo for me, orange. They sell those at different gear ratios so you can have a more accurate speed depending on if you have an aftermarket tire or your original tire size. So remember reinstall that, clip it back together like. Now once you have your speedo reinstalled, do remember to install the clip the correct way so the prongs are pushing in onto the speedometer ring. And then reinstall this uh, in whatever safety attachment mechanism you have. And reinstalling your drive shaft bolts, do remember to put just a wee bit of Loctite on. And then just strong arm it up there. Get your cord. Get you a little better angle. I'm almost disappointed we've gotten this far because that means we have to make this nice pretty drive shaft go into this 
dirty old Jeep. There's really only one way you can get these U-joints to fit up with the yoke, your new yoke on your NP231 SYE. And uh, using the provided bolts, you want to clean the oil off of them before using the Loctite. And just like we did with the front drive shaft, from the back of the yoke towards the axle, they will go in thread with a 916th or a 316th or something like that. And this might be hard to do on camera, so I'll get back to you in a second. Now you want to remove the pre-packaged electrical tape that is holding, and you want to be careful when you remove them because it is holding the U-joint packed with those needle bearings on or whatever type of bearing and grease. You know, carefully remove that before. Ow! Ho oh, ho, oh, that hurt. Easier said than done. I keep saying that. Not sure why. This is quite the workout. Now that we have our drive shafts installed, we have our seal sealed and everything torqued down, it is time to install that ATF four, two quarts of it for your NP231. And you want to make sure, you want to make sure one, you have the right socket, which I don't. Give me a second. You want to make sure your bottom drain plug is closed up from when we opened it to, you know, drain the whole thing. And once that's closed, I Oh, bunga, that hurt. Got that out. Now comes the moment of truth, whether or not the seal's actually sealed and everything is true, and we did it all right. Now I'm using the top from a uh, Lucas, Lucas Pro oil, you know, stop leak thing and it kind of fit on there and we're gonna see if it's gonna leak all over me or not oh my gosh this is actually working so like I said two quarts um, for an NP231 of ATF 4 or th plus 3 um, whatever you know Chrysler Dodge recommended stuff you can get and once it comes spilling out, then you know you've got enough. So now that we have that filled back up, we can put our transfer case mount, our transmission mount back up. And we're done. Once you've buttoned up your transmission plate and you've got your fluid in, all your bolts torqued, everything double checked drive shafts all that then we're good to make sure we actually have this stuff working correctly now I want you to jack up all your tires like so and then it should be in too high and neutral so that, and without it being connected to the engine you should be able to freely move this rear tire and it should just move itself or your rear other rear tire should move in an opposite manner depending on if you have an open differential or not now if we pop it into four low this and one of those tires should move and they are gosh four low is hard to pull that's some good gearing and then the same for four high these tires should move and they do a lot easier I might, might add and that pretty much means it works so let's take this on a test drive
was a very fun test drive for the new drive shaft and slip yoke eliminator that I'm definitely filming on the day of because I definitely did not forget to film an outro. So let's just get under here and inspect everything. In review, for this project, I had a pretty good amount of, you know, just general maintenance projects. I've lifted the Jeep, built some, you know, minor fabrication stuff, but I'd never really done anything driveline more than unscrewing or unbolting the drive shaft, the rear drive shaft for when I did a direct swap Chrysler 8 and a quarter into the rear. So that was pretty much the extent of driveline knowledge I had. So this project, I, you know, watched plenty of YouTube videos, made a long list of step-by-step -step what I was supposed to do. And I mean, it took me a, a most of a one day and then the morning of a second day to do it. But it, you know, would it cost hundreds or don't even want to think about how much it would have cost to pay somebody to do it and it was pretty easy and the parts were all laid out properly they had good instructions and this is a far greater peace of mind than the stock drive shaft with the slip yoke this double carton significantly reduced the amount of driveline vibrations I get going at highway speeds and I'm like I said the peace of mind I'm so much more confident just whipping around the trails, hitting big bumps, than I am with that slip yoke and that 24 year old, or wait, 27 year old drive shaft that used to be back here. And I'm sure one day I'll be putting a better one in the front, well, but that's, that's a while down the road right now. For all in all, I think this project's really good. My biggest complaint would be the uh, lock rings, the circle rings, whatever you call them. Those were a atrocious pain getting them on and off. Uh, would I recommend to you that you take your transfer case out or would I recommend you do this project like I did leaving it in and just taking the face off? I can't say that it would be a whole lot more time intensive one way or the other as I haven't done the other But it's absolutely doable to keep it in the car like I did and just take the face off And I think I would recommend at least trying that because that's a series of bolts you aren't gonna have to undo it's vacuum hoses and transmission lines and the control lines you're not going to have to unhook and put back together. I really think if you don't have a garage, a big place to you know take this all apart and rebuild it, this might just be the easier way to do it. Uh, I think it's definitely a doable way. Most of the videos of people on YouTube who've done it took it all the way out and I don't think you have to do that. I mean, it maybe hurt my neck. I wish I would have bought one of those uh, dollies to slide in and out, but I just had a piece of cardboard on the ground. Thing worked great. Um, I do recommend putting in the uh, shifters from Azzy Design Work. I put that in while I was doing this simultaneous. I'll put the link up in the description or down in the description up in the corner and check out how I did that. I highly recommend that. It shifts so much smoother between these two upgrades. My four wheel drive has never worked this well since this vehicle was stock all the way to now. It is the best performance I've had out of it. So give that a check. Like, subscribe, comment, follow me on Instagram at some guy Insta page. And remember, if some guy can do it,